Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So I have a question in chat or in comments to the video that asks, um, greetings, I'd be truly grateful if you could make a training video that outlines the typical day-to-day -day task that an entry-level QA expected to perform. That would be extremely helpful uh, for many individuals trying to break into the field. So I think I can just describe you what to expect when you start working as a junior QA and what kind of tasks. So we can talk firstly about uh, generic responsibilities and what you will be doing. And then I can give you an example more, more uh, specific in a certain industry. So one thing that you need to understand, your tasks as a QA engineer will vary depending on what industry you're going to work in, right? And also uh, depending on what kind of development methodology the company follows. But generally speaking, if you're starting as a junior QA engineer, you will be working most likely in some sort of agile environment, maybe Scrum. Uh, and your day will look like this. So at the start of the day, the whole team will have a daily stand-up or a scrum meeting where the whole team gets together and uh, everyone gives sort of a report. Uh, what are they doing? What are they going to work on today? And if there are any blockers. So this is a typical meetings that will happen every morning, every day for about 15 minutes total. So you give a quick report. Uh, what are you going to do today? Uh, what are your tasks, uh, if there are any issues, any blockers, like a very quick verbal report. So after that, uh, you will be looking through your email and the tasks assigned to you. If it's the middle of a sprint uh, or development cycle, you will have uh, current uh, tasks for the day that will align with the development. So if development on something is complete, you will be picking up those tasks and verifying them, QAing them, making sure that whatever developers did, um, f functions or features that they created, that they're working as expected per requirements, per documentation. Uh, if it's the beginning of the sprint and uh, you're looking into you know, other QA tasks, maybe the development is not ready on anything yet, uh, you might be going through... Uh, test cases that you have right now. You might be updating test cases or creating new one based on the functionality that you have. You might need to run through some regression testing um, or add more scenarios or um, maybe do uh, some specific testing. So something to do with verification or documentation around the quality assurance. Um, if it's closer to the sprint or to closer to the new update, new patch, new release, then the new build is going to be created soon. That's when you're going to get the most busy, uh, typically, because you will have a lot of things co coming in together and kind of being built uh, to be released as a whole package. So typically, it's like a crunch time closer to the release and um, because closer to the release, uh, to the end of the sprint, because you have many things to verify if something uh, many places practice that, you know, they don't account much for testing time. So you will have a bunch of things coming in um, at the same time that you will have to verify, that you will have to go through, you will have to approve them and say everything works as expected uh, because there's a, a deadline, a timeline that you need to meet. So you'll have to stay busy at certain times and maybe even stay late, right? So your day starts... Uh, you do a daily meeting, then you do testing activities um, or some work related to the QA documentation or general some QA stuff, updating scenarios, looking through scenarios based on where you right now in the sprint cycle, right? If there's actually something that you can test hands-on. Uh, then you will have um, to go through emails. You will have chat messages, group messages that you have to read through. Uh, there might be additional meetings throughout the day, maybe one or more before lunch. Uh, then around 12 o'clock, you'll have your lunch. Uh, different places will have a different time frame, but typically anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, most companies allow you up to one hour of a break during the day. Could be multiple 15 minutes, could be a whole one hour lunchtime. 
Uh, after lunch, probably more meetings and more tests and activities. Uh, when you get closer to the end of the day or sometimes to the end of the week, you might be doing um, specific reporting based on the testing that you did. So you might bring in some tests together that you ran through, count the numbers, how many total cases uh, you ran, um, how many pass, how many failed, how many bugs you found, how many bugs are open, how many bugs are closed. There could be like QA reports that you'll be submitting uh, weekly closer to the, the end of the week. And sometimes maybe you'll be doing some status report or, or updating things in like a spreadsheet for a QA uh, closer to the end of the day. It, it will vary from place to place. Um, so a lot of the work hands-on that you will be doing in the office so revolves around testing, uh, reading requirements, understanding requirements. Uh, you will do a lot of research and looking things up, like Googling for things or just reading or uh, going through company documentation because not everything is going to be straightforward. Many things you will have to ask and figure out. So figuring out and going and asking questions and uh, going and reading company documentation will be the norm for you uh, throughout the day if you something comes up and you have to you know figure out how things work you'll have to set like a mini goal i need to figure out what it is how it should work properly and you kind of have to go through the of the stages you know where to find the answers maybe you need to talk to other qa engineers to get the information, maybe you need to get in touch with a product manager if the requirements are not clear, so you can clarify them. Um, maybe you need to start searching online and find answers there. If something isn't working and you know you expect it to work, and it's uh, some some ready readily available uh, information on that is uh, is online, right? Um, so doing research, testing. Um, Verifying completion of the stories, creating test cases, uh, submitting and creating reports. Sometimes you will be testing your product. Uh, in certain cases, you might be testing different versions of your product and comparing the current state of your product versus the previous uh, build. Um, maybe you will be testing your product against the competitor's product. That is also possible or how it works in the environment with other similar products. Uh, so it, again, it's going to greatly depend on what kind of uh, product you're testing. As after your testing activities, after your bug reports during the day, if you found issues um, closer to the end of the day, again, you'll um, sign off. for you, You'll go through the emails again. You'll look through the chat. You'll see if there are no more meetings. So maybe you'll have a couple more meetings close to the end of the day. And then you'll focus on your work until the end of the day. And then you just sign off, right? So this is kind of more of a generic day of a junior tester. Um, some of the tasks and the activities you will be receiving uh, within the sprint. So whatever is needs to be done will be in the tickets and assigned in form of the tickets as work that needs to be done by you once the development is completed or just any generic QA tasks that need to be done within the sprint, within the couple weeks of the, of the sprint. Uh, some QA work will be assigned and communicated uh, directly from your management. There could be some projects that you need to accomplish, some things that you need to research, uh, some things that you will be doing, you'll be figuring out yourself. You, you will realize you need to do something and you'll be just working on that um, kind of self-creating and self-assigning work, understanding there's some needs that you need to address uh, for the quality assurance. Uh, now, if we go to a more specific example, so let's say when I worked uh, for Wi-Fi, testing Wi-Fi, uh, we my day would start again with the meeting, with the report, uh, with the testing, but some specific things would come up. So uh, many times we were building and maintaining uh, test environments and uh, test beds where you would have to install uh, Linux, you would have to install Windows, you would have to configure it specifically, um, you'll have to build a computer, put in hardware, install software, uh, connect uh, routers, modems, or gen generally speaking, like access points and connect stations to that, configure uh, how they're connected, run through traffic between them, measure the output, uh, the performance of those devices. Uh, you would 
build spreadsheets and uh, put in data on how fast your device is and other uh, parameters. Uh, you would run similar tests or the same tests with your competitors, other company devices, and compare your uh, data in different builds um, versus the competitor's data to see how they're doing versus you. So you can have something like a baseline reporting baseline that will go against your previous builds, your current build, and something that competitors are doing with their current software, their previous software on uh, different versions of, of a hardware. So maintaining and building test beds, um, creating test scenarios and uh, recording all the information. If you find issues, um, opening up bugs and then being able to reproduce these bugs and see you know, how many devices or uh, how many software versions are affected by the issue, uh, how reproducible it is. So gathering in logs, right? Sometimes you will work with developers. Actually, I think uh, quite often you will work with developers because uh, if something uh, needs to be reproduced and uh, you know developers are having a hard time reproducing this, uh, you might walk uh, through uh, the steps and show them how the issue gets triggered. Uh, sometimes uh, they don't have access to specific test data or test environments. So again, you will have to assist them uh, with getting the product to the state where it's broken, where something went wrong, so they can kind of look into what's happening live with you, uh, help with debugging. And some of the tasks might be specific if you're working with uh, clients or like certifications. I would often go to uh, different labs to certify Wi-Fi products where I would stay, you know, where I'd go there for multiple days until we would get certification for a certain product, and that might go for three, four, or five days. So instead of office, you'd go to a third-party lab with your device. You'll bring all the equipment that you need to um, have with you for the certification. You will run in, you'll be running tests there and showing the performance of your device and going through different scenarios, you know, how your device works and scenario A, B, and C, and create a report and then get your product certified. Um, so again, if you go into specifics, what your daily things might be as a Q engineer, it will vary greatly from industry to industry. But I think the main component of it stays the same. You have to make sure that your device or your product is doing what is expected to do, that it's not getting you know new bugs, new regressions are not getting worse from sprint to sprint, only gets better or stays same level of a high level of quality. Um, so reading and the understanding requirements and testing against those requirements and making sure that the product is doing what expected will be your core thing. Then um, opening bug reports, reproducing bugs, uh, verifying fixes that their product was fixed and then now it's doing what is expected. Uh, reporting on the data, testing data, building the reports, uh, and, you know, Working with the team to resolve any issues, doing research if something is unclear, that will be like your daily thing. So as a junior QA, you're definitely going to be you know, learning a lot, and it will take some time to understand what product is doing and um, you know how to test it and prioritize in test cases, or maybe you'll be working with your management. They have like testing priorities for you. Uh, communication, product verification, understanding requirements uh, and reporting, right? So that would be like your daily tasks, daily activities, and your typical day, uh, you know, could be a mix of things uh, that you need to do out of that, plus meetings, right? Plus lunch break. Yeah, uh, that's it. Let me know if this was helpful. This is Alex, you say days. Thank you and bye-bye.